We're so pleased to welcome back on set today Leslie Cutler, who's a licensed psychotherapist, and we have her on often for her section that we call Mindful Moments. Welcome back. Thank you, Julie. It's great to be here after a little summer break. Yeah. And here we are back into the swing of things, high gear. Uh, I thought it would be appropriate today to talk a little bit about managing our own children's stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about five ways of maybe doing this and also how to differentiate between stress and anxiety. And this is a perfect time of year since we're back to school we and that are. has its own sets of stress and anxiety for children and for parents. And for parents, just getting back into that groove, getting out of the house each yeah. morning yeah. is, you know, <laughs> quite the challenge. So what is the difference actually between stress and, and, and anxiety disorder? Okay, so this is how I explain it to the kids in my, in my office. Imagine you're out on the beach. You're yeah. in the ocean, you're with your friends, it's a great afternoon, you've got your boogie board going. All of a sudden you notice that everybody on the shore is waving their arms, screaming at you to come in, to come in, and all of a sudden you feel a fin rub among your leg. Okay. So in that moment, you obviously are enormously stressed. Sure. You are moving as quickly as you can to the shore. Now, stress is appropriate in that situation, sure. obviously. <laughs> Jaws is getting Jaws, yes. yeah. I mean, clearly, that's yeah. an enormously stressful yep. situation. But the difference is individuals with that are stressed, that feeling will go away. Yep. They'll see their family, everybody will hug, everything will be fine. Yep. But for the individual that has anxiety, those symptoms continue. So that kind of heightened state that yeah. you're in in that moment, which is, I gotta do something, I gotta do something quickly, yeah. doesn't seem to dissipate. So you're always on edge. You're always, there's always on there's edge. There's always a tension. Yes, and okay. sometimes it has absolutely no purpose whatsoever. I mean, there's nothing in the environment that's stimulating it. But it, what's very confusing for people is that a lot of the physical symptoms of stress and anxiety are the same. same. You know, it's that rush, you know, it's the chest, pounding, yep. it's, you know, the stomach disorder, that yep. dizziness, dry mouth, all of those symptoms are common with both. Okay. So that's why it's very important to check in mm -hmm. and see, you know, okay, is there anything in your environment that's contributing to this to kind of really watch your child carefully to ensure that these symptoms aren't going on all the time. Right. And so for a parent, how early can you can you kind of identify, oh, my child has a lot of stress, or oh, my child might have an anxiety disorder? You know, I think about when they start entering school, okay. you can start noticing these types of things. And like we were talking about, you know, um, before said is so much of what happens in our home can kind of contribute to that as well. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more a little bit about that. Okay. But I wanted to sort of present some ideas today of ways of helping our kids manage Stress. Stress. Okay, so there's five ways. Um, and the first one is to encourage your child to face his or her fears, not to run away from them. Hmm. And this is huge. And I, and I got to say, I really struggle with this because so often I'll see my child in a situation that I know is incredibly challenging. And my gut reaction will be to jump in sure. and remove them rescue from it. rescue right. them right. you know and it's you know it's the mother bear in me mm -hmm. and i see a lot of other parents doing that too but to be able to step back mm -hmm. in just a minute and as long as they're not in danger right let them ride it out because the first time it's terrifying yeah the second time it's scary yeah the third time it's unpleasant yep. and eventually in time that one thing won't be so they're learning anymore. to figure it out how to deal with it, how to figure way, it out. Navigating right. it. Yeah. And you know, it's not that you're not there to help them. Yeah. Obviously you're there. You can kind of say, you've got this. I know you have the skill set. So get back in there. Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. Um, and that's very much of a challenge, but something that we all need to work on. And as parents, we need to set that example. So we don't yes. freak out when things happen. We yes. need to stay calm and then they will learn from that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Second, um, tell your child it's okay to be imperfect. Okay. And you know, everything about society tells us that we need to perform on a level that's extremely high, that we need to present as if nothing is ever wrong. But there's something about being real. Mm -hmm. it's, there's something about learning from mistakes, allowing your kid to fall down and realize like, okay, you know, maybe ice skating isn't my thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> or whatever it is, yeah. you know, or, hey, I'm tone deaf and I'm trying to be a great singer and, yeah. and that's just not going to work for me. Right. So, you know, find the few things that your child exceeds at yeah. and, and push them to perform very, very well in that, that area right. and recognize that, hey, you know, we are all limited in our own ways. Yep. Now, can I just play devil's advocate here for Absolutely. one second? I know there's a there's a movement or it has been in the in the past sometimes in a situation everyone who participates gets a participation trophy or right. a ribbon right. and there are no winners there is no first place right. second place what kind of a message does that send and is that good or is it good in some cases or does that teach the wrong message that yeah there are some people that are going to be better at something that you are Yes, and I, and I so agree with that, and it's so frustrating that everybody gets a trophy because not everybody deserves a trophy. And then, you know, what? there's no motivation yeah. to perform on a higher level. But I think what happens is so many parents are pushing their child mm. towards perfection that this is the movement of people pushing back. back. Yeah. And there needs to be some sort of happy medium right. in this whole thing. Right, and your point that... Go with what your child loves and what your yes. child is good at and, and push them towards that. Absolutely, Give them all the yes. tools they can get to get as best as they can be at that. Right. Not at right. everything. Not at everything. Okay, number three, schedule relaxing activities. I know, this sounds ridiculously cheesy. <laughs> I, I know, but there's got to be a place in life where we all stop and breathe. Yeah. And, you know, I know our house becomes really chaotic at times with mm -hmm. everybody going different directions and we all seem to kind of lose each other in that process. Yeah. You know, when we're running too fast and too hard all the time, tempers are high, yeah. levels of irritability yeah. are off the charts, and it really is just a matter of time before we have a major meltdown. Yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody does, right. you know? Right. Um, so I like the idea of saying, you know what, Sunday night, we're going to cook in, yeah. we're going to play some games, we're not going to have friends over, maybe right. we're just going to do something as right. a family. Right. Or, you know, listen, I know everybody's busy this week, but why don't we take Wednesday night and, you know, go out for ice cream. And it doesn't need to be around food. It can right. be just stay at home and watch a movie or right. do something. Or that, read a book or, or do yeah. artwork together, make a project. Make a project, yeah. work on a puzzle, calm. something yeah. that's going to keep people relaxed and okay. calm. What's number four? All right, number Speaking four. Speaking of. <laughs> Stay calm. You know, Speaking how often do we see toddlers running, right? Yeah. They just learn to walk, they start running, they wipe out. Yeah. Flat on their face. The first thing they all do is look back at mom or dad. Yep. And if mom or dad is yep. it's holding their breath, the child is going to react in that way. Right. They're going to hysterically cry. Yeah. But if the parent's like, hey, you're okay. Yeah. Help them get up and move along their way. Then that was a good fall. You did yeah. that well. You did that gracefully. <laughs> Absolutely. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. um, then that really reflects the response of the child. Right. So our children are mirrors of ourselves. Yes. So it's like for those moments where you're feeling really, you know, a lot of anticipatory anxiety yeah. or you're feeling yeah. really you know, on edge, it's like, take a moment and realize that no matter how much you try to fake it, your own kids are watching you. Oh yeah, you set the and tone. You set the and tone. even if you're pretending that you're not stressed, they know when you are. And they know, and your they animals know. in your house know too. Absolutely. Dogs barking, yep. you know. It's they do. Just, it's, it's like everybody so knows, true. you can't fake anybody out. Number five, practice relaxation exercises with your child. Yeah, I mean, a lot of parents will be like, okay, go meditate. And kids don't know how to do <laughs> what that. What does that mean? And like, what the heck, you know? But there's one activity that I show my kids how to do because I hear all the time kids come into my office and they're like listen I studied for my social studies test so hard last night I knew it front and back I got into class and I just stared at the paper I, nothing was coming up mm -hmm. everybody was writing furiously which was only adding to my anxiety yeah. and I couldn't access any of the information yeah. that I was taught so this is what I tell my kids to do in those moments and you can do this in a way where you know you don't look silly and it's not obvious okay. to you know the rest of the people sitting around you so when we get anxious our bodies do this oh, yeah we shoulders come up shoulders yep. come up we hold our jaw mm -hmm. we clench our fists yeah. we cross our legs so what I tell my clients to do is the first thing you're going to do is uncross your legs mm -hmm. and just let them hang. Mm -hmm. So you're going to let them hang loosely, yeah. okay? Then you're going to unclench your fists, yeah. and you're going to do a quick shoulder rub yeah. to loosen that up. You're going to loosen your jaw, and you're going to take your hands like this, and you're just going to put them on your lap. Yeah. You're going to take a couple of 
you know, breath through the nose, in through the nose, out through the mm, mouth, yeah. and just sit with that for a second. I feel calmer already. <laughs> <laughs> but you will find that the information starts coming back yeah. to you. Yeah. And so it's so important how we hold our bodies. Yeah. And thankfully, in this digital age, there's some absolutely incredible online self-guided meditations. Yeah. There's one that I really like to do with my kids at bedtime, and it's, you know, 10 minutes, um, and it just kind of walks them through relaxing their yep. body, everything yep. that they're holding tight, and that sort of thing, and helps them go off to sleep. So they can kind of download these on their phones sure. and listen to them as they're falling asleep. Yeah. Yep. Or even play something in your own head yes. that you just, a mantra that you yep. learn. So you can do it anywhere. You don't have to have a phone. You don't have to have electricity. You can just do it. Yes. Be yeah. able to self-control and self-relax and self-contain. And that's the whole point, is that we're in charge of right. what we're letting our minds do. Right. And it's how we're reacting to things or how we're not reacting to things that makes the difference. You're so right. And, you know, like we were talking about, too, you know, if, you, if you've done all types of meditation with your child, if your child exercises regularly, if they're getting a great diet, if you're yep. really teaching them to communicate well, and they're still struggling with yep. the level of anxiety that's through the roof, you know, I think a lot of times it's good to get some counseling sure. so they can get their own toolkit yep. of things that they can access in those moments yeah. um, to help them navigate it. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Very good, and parents will take this advice, I'm sure, Thank and, and um, help their kids. Wonderful. Because every day is an adventure. Absolutely. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for watching. If you want to see the show again, you can check out our website, and PCN is also on YouTube. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook to get up-to-date info. From all of us at PAC-TV, have a great week.